Hi, and welcome back to the Industry Expert Series on PCB Data Management. My name is John Watson. We are going to be looking at in this episode is what does successful PCB data management involve and how do we structure that? And this is all based on a principle of success. And I can tell you that our objective as designers and PCB engineers is to what? Actually create a PCB design that works. And I can tell you that success is sub a subjective principle though. Usually when we speak of success, what are we talking about? We're based on established objectives or goals or what, and then when you reach them, we consider it a success and it's all closed out, it's finished. But that's not the case with data management systems. The reason is information is always changing. If you've been in this industry any period of time, you've realized that the one constant in this in industry is that it will change. And we are continually improving on our how we do things, the tools that we use. The industry is always shifting in what it's looking at. And the PCB data management system has got to keep up with that. It's a continual project that we're going to be working on. So basically what I'm saying is this, there is no finish line. There is no sitting in a conference room with everyone and saying, okay, we've reached our goal. So success is going to be based on a baseline that you start from and then continually keep improving on. What I'm going to be introducing to you now is what's called the SMART rule. Now, every PCB data management system is different in, in the details. Um, every single one is, is like noses. Everyone has one and they're all different. However, there are some fundamental principles that every library needs to have in place for it to be successful. And these are what I call the five pillars of the SMART rule. S-M-A-R-T. Singularity, managed, architecture, reviewable, and tailored. These are going to be vital moving forward in your PCB data management system because they are pillars that you can build on. And like a pillar in a building, I can tell you that they, they're going to provide your support for your system. Every pillar is required. You can't pull even one of them out because they all depend on each other. And everything that you build off of this will actually require you to have all of them in place. So just keep that in mind. So let's look at this in more detail. The number one pillar, singularity. Singularity of what? What are we looking at? Number one is the singularity of your data and your processes. I'm not having singularity is like giving a group of people different maps and starting points and blindfolding them and hoping that they all end up in the same location. And I have actually seen in multiple times where we have gone through with so many errors and the, the seen board failures. And once you get into fabrication and into assembly, we find out that there are failures. And a lot of times what happens is they get pointed back to the libraries and finding out that someone used a personal library, a rogue library. How, have you ever thought about this? When someone is dishonest, what do we say? He told a lie. But when they're honest, what do we say? We say, they told the truth. Why? Because the truth is singular. A lie is multiple. You can have multiple endless uh, errors or problems in your library or in your data in some way, but there's only one that's correct. Keep this in mind though. Just because a design got through, just because you were able to use a rogue library, for example, and your data got you through the process, doesn't mean it was correct. All that means is that you were lucky a lot of times. And keep in mind that we are constantly trying to improve ourselves. I, I was recently, when I started at a company recently, I can tell you that 
One of the first experiences I had as a designer in this company was uh, one of the double E's came over and he took me over to his desk and he opened his drawer and in there was this huge pile of boards, all in various stages of design. Some were bare boards, some had some parts on them. Other ones were just not even, you know, just still in the pan panels even. And he said, those are our failures. Those are the boards that didn't make it through. And when I began to investigate this, I actually found that 40% of every design that went through that was, was wasted. It was actually wrong in some way. And when I began the investigation, I found out that the result was rogue libraries. Everyone worked from their own source of what? Their version of truth. And our desire is to have designs of quality and integrity. If you, if you want that, you're going to, it's going to have to come from a single source of data. So your very first pillar is singularity. You have to have a single source of information that you and your team works from. That means this, you need to get rid of your rogue libraries. And sometimes that's a hard thing. That's a hard thing for designers to let go of them. And, but you're, it's required, you have to do this. It's, it's really necessary if you will begin to develop and to, to take care of some of these issues that you have on your PCBs. So some of the key takeaways, I want you to have a realistic view of success. I want you to realize that when you be, get into your PCB data management system, that it is going to be changing, that it is a fluid living item in your design process. I also introduced to you the five pillars, and we looked at our very first pillar of singularity of our process and of our data. I hope this has been helpful for you, and I would encourage you to share this content with your your colleagues and your, your co-workers. And please, I want you to give us your comments and your, your, your either positive or negative. In the next episode, what we're gonna be looking at is we're gonna be looking at the next two pillars of how we develop our data management system and how we then begin to structure this by looking at what is gonna be our managed and our, our architecture. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening. My name is John Watson.